Well, hello everyone and welcome to Playing This Universe, a conversation with myself, I'm Welsh. Today we'll be talking about the pathway to happiness. Are you able to pursue happiness and find your own joy? You know, the world is being presented to us with so much going on with the pandemic and, you know, so many people have lost their job and so many people life have never been the same. How do we define happiness and how can we find our own joy? And Katrina will be answering this question. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Katharina and why she's so relevant in this conversation today. She's a successful trainer, transformation coach, consultant, a psychogenetic with more than 10 years experience in consulting, seminar and training trainer in different countries. As a result of her training, people realize their goal, their true potential, what they really want out of life. She finds the easiest way to solve the hardest problem in the most effective way on how to be happy in life in your family and how to free yourself from conflict realize your talents and potential and move to new levels of quality and harmonizing living she's been living in the uk for more than 20 years and is based in london she's an author of a unique course my happy relationships She's a meditator for many things, especially helping people, thousands of people to realize their dreams and to live a happy and well-balanced life. I'm super excited to share her story. And not just her story, but understand happiness comes from so many different angles and so many people have a different different definition of what true happiness is. How do you balance relationship? How do you balance motherhood? How do we define happiness? Most importantly, how can we use happiness to overcome our pain and find our joy? Meet my amazing guest, Katrina, as she shares her story. Well, hello everyone again. Welcome again to Painless Universal Conversation with myself and Welsh. Today's conversation is really talking to you about the pathway to happiness. So many of you might be struggling with this issue about how do you find your joy with all the living circumstances surrounding the world today. There's so much questions we have with our own self, with the world, with our family and friends, that there's still ways you can still find your joy and smile from it. My guest, Katharina, will be telling you about her own journey and how she's managed to find her joy through all of this. She's also teaching other people this method. Katharina, how are you? Um, very well. Thank you very much, Annie, for this opportunity to, you know, for me to share my experience and I hope uh, I, my, my story will be uh, very helpful and useful to, to many of, of the people who will hear us. I, I think it will. I think, um, you know, when I l- l- look at your pathway, like for example, you know, you, when people look at the introduction of the bio, you have a unique path to happiness, which is something that we all question ourselves, what is happiness? How do we even know when we're truly happy when do we get to that peak and say okay we're satisfied we're okay with the happiness we've attained and let's keep that going and you've managed to do that with your um three kids you've managed to uh, you're you're a jewelry designer which is something i don't want us to forget about because that's very important and you have seen your work incredible jewelry designer you are consultant um psychogenetic genetic and you have a hobby as a singer before we get started into all of this, who are you, Katerina? Well, my name is Katerina Yaroslavskaya. And uh, yes, I am a consultant psychogenetic uh, and I'm a coach, trans- transformational coach, um, as well as I am um, um, a designer, jewelry designer. So yes, I have many ho- talents and uh, <laughs> And, um, you know, I love what I do and I give 100% to what I do. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's true. You really do because your jewelries are truly amazing. And also the other part of you, the, the way you teach about the happiness and stuff, that's also you, you, you teach that really. Anyone who listens to it really learn a, to know th- uh, too about you. When you look into your background, what led you on this path where you are today? Yes, uh, thank you for asking. I'm originally I'm from St. Petersburg. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And um, I was always, you know, when you are born in this beautiful city, 
I think you are naturally drawn to, to the beauty and the architecture, you know, the way it's built. And um, I was always admiring art and I'm an art historian by my first degree. And I've spent about five years uh, learning uh, at the Hermitage Museum, you know, absorbing beauty of all these beautiful old masters paintings, um, impressionists and, um, I was kind of a dreamer then, um, but um, on another hand, Saint Petersburg is quite has quite severe climate and conditions. And at that time, what I wanted to do there, it was not very well developed the art business. So um, I moved to London uh, about more than twenty years ago, and I was working in art galleries there. And then I moved to the jewelry business, you know, working for big brands like Bulgari, Van Cleef. Uh, so everything was going very well. And then uh, finally, also, I met my wonderful husband. I got married and uh, uh, we had uh, three children, one after another. We had uh, one girl and then we had uh, uh, twins one, one year after. And that's um, when I had three children. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, my way uh, of looking at myself uh, changed. I thought that um, would I be only a mother now? And what about my talents, uh, which I at that time I didn't even know what my talents were, but I suddenly felt the pressure of exploring the talents and the, my potential, which it was within me, mm -hmm. which again, I, I will tell you, I didn't know what was it but I felt the pressure. So I, I felt very strange, you know, from in on one hand, I'm newly married. I'm so happy with my husband and I have these wonderful children uh, whom I'll have to, you know, look after. And on another hand, I had this pressure and I felt that like, uh, I'm, yes, I'm very happy as a woman, but as a personality, mm -hmm. I felt that it was like end of my personality somehow very, you know, interesting but thanks to my children I started uh, learning about myself exploring and my husband wouldn't understand me because he would say you know you have children you have to look after them you know you have a great life what else you can ask for and um, at that time that's when um, I uh, my one of my friends uh, close friends she told me about psychogenetics and I was very interested to know what what was it about mm -hmm. and um, you know she told me that it helped her a lot and I also wanted help in my life at that time because I was confused so this is how I came to to learn this wonderful method no I have to ask you this the method and um, what you've just said there about the kids and being confused because I think this is important for many listeners right now yes many people have kids and they get to that point after having kids of that confusion who am I what do I stand for? Am I just going to be a mother to these kids? Or am I still going to progress in my career? And I know for a fact that millions of mothers struggle with this question. When you were going through this difficulty in your mind, because you you know, you it's not like you were not in a comfortable position. You were in a comfortable position where you could actually just say to yourself, I could define myself as a mother. How, why did you not choose that definition of a mother and how did you then find your true path? Yes, yeah, so um, I couldn't just be a mother because I had this pressure within myself and I couldn't, I didn't know where to go, what to do. I really, I needed help at that time. And uh, that's when I started learning about my genetics. So what is psychogenetics? Uh, um, it's uh, we when we are born we inherit uh, with genetic code we inherit certain looks yes a certain sort of color of the eyes was well, the way we will look um, but also we inherit um, mentality of our ancestors uh, and we it's like we are coded to, to lead this way, to, um, to repeat patterns of our ancestors, the way of thinking, uh, some of their experiences, which we don't even realize. We think that we've done this, yeah. but um, it's not only our action. What we've done is uh, it's been led by our ancestors' uh, patterns and um, their dreams. And um, so when we are 
we, when we learn about what we actually inherited mentally, what thoughts, what feelings, what, what the women, for example, felt when they were when we, they got married, were they happy, not, did they realize their dreams or not, so everything. Even, for example, if um, a person, uh, let's say, and we have, we are coded uh, three, four generations. So um, many people, you know, in psychology, they look into, you know, how the, how their children, how as a child, the person was brought up, uh, but very rarely they look at, um, for example, uh, lives of grandmothers, grandfathers, and grand grandparents, mm -hmm. and I um, analyze all these. So th um, thanks God, I you know found this method for myself. I um, could understand why this sudden pressure was on me uh, with the time when the children were born. And um, when looking at my genetics, I discovered that women of um, three, four generations so, uh, before, they were not, um, they didn't discover their talent, they didn't uh, follow their professional pathway. Um, and um, many unhappy events were, uh, um, were connected with born of the birth of their children. Once the children were bo born, then the kind of some problems started, let's say this way. And when I um, discovered it, I, I understood that um, it's normal that I feel this pressure and it's normal that on one part I'm happy, on another part I'm unhappy. And um, the good thing with mental genetics, I mean, for example, with like um, genetics, traditional genetics, we cannot change color of our eyes. Yeah, we can put lenses, for example. But with mental genetics, when we understand where the problem is coming from, we can uh, change it. Mm -hmm. So we consciously understand, okay, my parents, my mother, my father, for example, yes, my ancestors, women, they um, couldn't realize their dreams um, uh, of, you know, their talents. Um, and uh, so this is normal that I didn't even know which talents I had, but um, uh, I can. Wow. Nice. Yes. And another wonderful uh, thing with, about um, psychogenetics, so it's called mental genetics, that um, we also fulfill dreams of our ancestors. So what happened to me, uh, and especially uh, the more unhappy they were in some particular um, way of their life, yeah. the, uh, you know, the more people suffer, the more they dream, the dreams are bigger. Oh, wow. This, no, is, it, this is, is such a, a unique way of looking at it because we always look at our life, uh, current life circumstance, whenever things go wrong or whenever we're unhappy, we're asking questions, we think it's just because of the way we were brought up. But this digs more than just the way we we're brought up. This goes into further ancestries to understand what were their needs. And exactly. these, these needs filter down to us that. Probably your aunt. So you're saying like our great grandparents probably wanted to explore, they wanted to do things, but they couldn't do it. And that thing is passing of yes. that gene of wants, I guess. Yes. yes, and they've been dreaming about it. And in, mm. in psychogenetics, it's called BID, basic inner desire which for example, a grand grandmother was dreaming about it, but she didn't have, uh, uh, her husband died. Um, she had three children, she had to bring up the children. So she couldn't think about any kind of talents or career. She had to look after children. Then mm -hmm. the grandmother, uh, she was an um, actress, but when she got married, uh, her husband was very jealous about her and she had to leave her husband with the child and uh, you know to escape the jealousy but then because she was single mother and he didn't support her again she gave up her career of, of an actress and she had to make money you know in sales for example so she didn't pursue her dreams as well but she was you know the more person suffers so in one generation it's just a dream in second generation it's a stronger dream but then third generation it's drive it's a real drive and and uh, for example we, for me it became a drive i have to realize my talents i don't care how many children i have i just have to do it and you know when nobody supports you nobody believes in nobody understands you you have to yes. find your own way but which is great because then you have to look inside wow no and i think this is so, so important because so many people will be going through this right now 
struggling within themselves, having after having kids, finding out what why do I need, why do I still not feel satisfied? I'm doing all these things, I'm a wonderful mother, a wonderful wife, then there's still something burning inside me. Um, so if any, when people come to you, as you you are as a professor, um, this is a professional thing you do. When people come to you, what advice do you, would you, do, do you typically look out for? So someone who's looking to do this, what advice would you typically sure. tell them? Yes, sure. So usually consultation is two hours because I need to analyze their genetics. So uh, sometimes a person knows what they want. Sometimes they don't know what they want. So first of all, I, I help them to uh, really concentrate on one thing, what exactly they want. Sometimes they, they have three, two, three things. So we put priority. This is the main one. This is the secondary one. Uh, then, um, for example, a woman um, wants to realize her dreams. Yes, her, her talents. Because, for example, she doesn't work. She's with children. So this is um, what she wants. Then I'm looking at her genetics. I'm um, asking specific questions about ancestors, but not all information. Because in two hours, you won't be able, and you don't need all information. I just need to ask something specific. I see if uh, mostly women, but also men in, in the generation. Uh, who, what happened when they, she got married, um, uh, who worked, who didn't work, did they love their profession or not? And for example, uh, the person would say, I don't know if my grandmother would love my profession, but if she died young, if she had some diseases, for example, it's like, it's like a complex. So I'm, uh, mm, I'm well trained, trained in it. And uh, so I know what specifically to ask and uh, how to explain this to the, you know, to the client client basically and then when the person understood why um, he or she in this situation right now it's already great relief right so you when you know ah okay I'm not strange so nothing wrong with me okay yeah that makes sense it's because of that and that so I explain them and then um I um, uh, give them affirmations to write. Affirmations, it's uh, short sentences, uh, which um, changed um, the program. We are like computers, yes, in some ways. We have some programs. Uh, some programs we realize, some we don't. We don't understand. So I take a particular program, for example, um, the woman say, yes, I want to realize my talent. I want to have a career, but my husband is against it. So I see that, for example, her grandmother's husband was against her. For example, like in my case, he was against her singing on the stage, um, of her acting on the stage. Yes. And the same was with my husband. So I thought he was against me realizing my talents. Mm -hmm. So I understand it's not because my husband is like this, but be because... Um, it's within me. It's my ancestors. Yeah. And of course, the husband would have um, complementary in his gen genes. Yes, maybe some jealousy, maybe. Yes, it's usually when people get together, especially when they get married or their partners, there'll be lots of complementary in, in their genetics, which they don't realize even. That's true. Yeah. So, and um, so I, um, I tell, for example, in my case, when I, I saw that my husband is against me realizing my talents, I was, there, I was writing this kind of affirmation. When I am uh, doing, um, I realize my talents, doing something I love, my husband is even more happy and loves me more. That is weird though. Yeah. And I was, yeah, I was writing, I was crying. I didn't believe it because my husband was not like this at that yes. time. He was against it and he didn't understand me. So, but it's something opposite of what is recorded in our mind. But this is affirmation we have to, you have, you know, you, you need a specialist. So he would know what to change for what. Because if we don't change the recording, it will be the same. Yeah, so I can just say, oh, I realize my dreams, I realize my talents, I go and do it. Yes. Uh, but so, um, so now, as you know, my husband, he is one of my greatest partners, supporter, admirer of what I do. Yeah, and this is, it happened. That is, you know, honestly, I love what you just said, because it's true. Yeah, um, we forget that. Yes, we we fight that thinking they are against us. Their husband yes. don't want to support us, not realizing that 
we have to change something in us in to us. make it yes. acceptable for them. Exactly. And it's just understanding that wire to change yes. that makes it acceptable for both of your genetics to come together and then both of you become complementary to each other. And this is, I mean, it's a fantastic thing. I wish I, a lot of people don't know. And I hope through this conversation, more and more people understand it and can contact you to know more about it. I have to ask you about this question because today, one of the things you also specialize in is that you know many people are struggling with this being happy. We, we have this definition of being happy and this is something you, you also do because you understand the meaning of that term, being happy. What does it really mean? How can a person overcome this pain and still be happy? Yes, uh, so I think first step, uh, which, uh, for example, uh, how it started with me, I, I should stop um, fighting with circumstances and with people if something I feel that something against. I just, um, first of all, I have to believe that I'm in a friendly universe. And the universe is for me, is there for me. And uh, for me, it's like a, an electricity. We can, you know, switch on the power uh, or we can burn everything with the same electricity. If So we need to learn, we need to know how to use this electricity, right? And the same with the uni universal power, which helps us. We have, we're not only body, we're spirit, we have energy. And of course, we're, when we're excited, we have more energy. And uh, so everything uh, starts with us just to believe that universe is there to help us and uh, it will send us the right people once we're in peace with ourselves. And being in peace with ourselves, we have to look inside. For some people, it's painful to look inside mm -hmm. because, and also it's a pattern how the ancestors, again, they were fighting with circumstances. Just, you know, have time for yourself to, uh, to know um, what, who you are, what you want, what your priorities in life, and not to rush for anything. Just, you know, have one priority at a time mm -hmm. and um, to learn what is important for you, uh, what is important, uh, how you, and some people say, oh, uh, I would do everything I would have done so many things, if not my family, I have to look after my parents, I have to uh, look after my children, I'm overwhelmed with all these duties, but who created it? We created the family. We created, you know, we have we have children. Of course, sometimes there is surprise. There are surprises. For example, I wanted to have two children, but I got three. Yes, I think it's a great bonus. But in the beginning, I was not ready for that. But you know, uh, just um, we, if we look out ourselves, and I don't think it's selfish as a center of universe for mm -hmm. ourselves because there is part of um universe or god whoever calls it what name um, you know spirit there is a god inside us and um or who uh, you know who knows our priorities and if we are close to our god yeah. um you know everything will be great yes and that that's honestly that's the simple way of just being happy it's just the beginning what you just said we we try to fight with the universe we try to be and uh, think everyone is against us and that creates unhappiness where if you see the world that yeah everyone might be against us like the electricity which you just described that everything could be against us then it would you'll never see the purpose of the world which is so beautiful and you know it has so much this and so much beauty could to help us with in your teaching me method of happiness right why is your method so unique? Because I see so many people talk about you, what the way you do it. Why is that so unique in your methods? I think it's unique, uh, first of all, because it's looking at the person as a whole complex, uh, yes, of the, of the inheritance, of the beliefs, of the culture, of the background. And every person is normal uh, considering that background, that culture. Uh, so um, it's nothing strange for me. No problem is strange. No task is strange. No person is strange. And uh, secondly, it's um, a very um, intelligent uh, method because uh, 
uh, it's very honest method. So we cannot lie to ourselves. You know, it's the um, I immediately um, detect what is there. The person is doing maybe not very correctly. You know, we cannot lie to our, if person is lying to someone. Uh, he's lying to himself. So we cannot cheat ourselves. Um, and um, and it's very very fast. So I just need one consultation uh, for, with a person. So you don't need to go like, you know, every week or for hours. Um, very fast, very efficient. And um, one consultation, two hours. And then within one month, one follow-up consultation for one hour. But quite often people even don't want to follow up. They say, oh, I solved this one and um, I'm so happy. And then I suggest people to, you know, to take courses because I have uh, two um, unique courses uh, about relationships, about success, 15 steps to success. And then they continue to learn, yeah. but uh, you know, going higher and higher <laughs> progress. I, I, I like that because it's true. You, you just have to have this, one size you don't have one size fit all you almost like you tailor it to everyone you're not afraid of individuals you like come on and i'll accept you i'm not yes. i'm not there to judge you so that's such a unique method of um approaching human beings especially because we're also unique we're also different exactly. not in all shapes sizes and form and colors so it's how you, i mean that's a good way of looking at it you know and it, it, on the news daily, you, we hear about mental health. Mental health is a key thing that affects everyone. And mental health has, is being turned around in a way where we uh, make, it's making us weak when we think about mental health. Whether I mean, thinking about it in a way, how can we make our mental health into mental health of happiness? Change it, change, or change that language. What advice would you give to a person on how to start being happy Real, to realize their true potential, someone who's not going through a good time right now, yeah. someone who's always unhappy, someone who feels the world is constantly against them. What advice would you pass on? Thank you. Wonderful question. Yes, I've also had uh, been into um, difficult situations in my life. And what would believe me, the first of all, of course, it's, it's belief that I will um, go through it, I will do it, I will, uh, you know, get there where I want it. I remember when I was a child, I was always freezing in St. Petersburg, a very severe uh, climate, and at that time it was quite dark and uh, quite sad. People were, you know, sad looking and uh, not many opportunities because uh, um, it was the communist times finished and it was kind of a mess around. And I was, you know, Remember sitting in my room, I'm, I don't have any siblings, I'm uh, only child and uh, I, I used to spend lots of time with myself. I think this is where my, you know, sort of philosophical point of view, I was always, you know, looking for answers um, within. Uh, and um, I would uh, say, uh, God, really, I want something, I, I want, you know, some miracles to happen in my life. I don't want me to be here and, you know, in these conditions. Please, please, can you help me? And somehow um, uh, looking at my life now, I achieved lots of things which I was dreaming about. And I remember this little child, which was, you know, praying. Uh, and, um, you know, her dreams came true. I would say uh, praying, you know, praying, believing is very important. This is so that, that this stage is transitional. It will go. We might even forget about it. During suffering, we, we think it will never end. It's like, you know, lots of stuff. But then we think, oh, this is in the past. I don't remember it, you know, when everything is, you know, starts, starts uh, being um, well. And another thing, of course, which is also very important is gratitude for our life that we, uh, we um, you know, every morning I, before getting up, I just, I thank universe that I'm alive. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a big gift. When, when I'm alive, I can do anything, you know, I, you know, I can see, I can hear, I can talk, you know, um, I can move. And it's all, uh, even, you know, there was some fault was happening, something the person was, is blaming himself. He can change it all. As, well, as soon as he, he know, he's alive here. So just, you know, um, sometimes we, 
we want more and more and we're never satisfied you see i think dissatisfaction is very um, sort of big burden on a person yes. and if we start with little things little steps i always like you know um, example of uh, there is smallest seed of um, you know in in the world we just we start with little little steps just to be grateful at least that we can open our eyes if somebody cannot open their eyes they you know he can hear for example you know we can always find so better concentrate on something which is uh, you know which is for example one leg is not healthy in pain but another leg is not in pain okay we concentrate on this leg which is not in pain Absolutely. I like that. Uh, it's so true. So, so way you, is the perspective, the way you look at things, and that could change our mental health, that will change it to so that finding the little things to be grateful for. You are now a mother, um, you know, you're a mother of three, you've achieved those things that you used to dream of before. Your husband has adapted to all your, um, you know, your success, your jewelry designer, you uh, mother, you help other people on that pathway to find their own joy and happiness. When it comes to balancing it all, because there's one thing wanting it all, and now you have it all, it's now the balancing act of not having it all. How have you managed to achieve that? Because I see you've done it so, you know, you've done it so well. You brought up beautiful kids, you were doing this successful in your jewelry line, you were doing this amazing with um, helping others people find their joy. How have you managed to balance it? Yes, thank you for, for this wonderful question. Uh, so um, the, the key word is a balance. Yeah. And again, when we're looking at ourselves as a center of universe, I would say to myself, I wanted children. It's for me. They were born because I wanted them. So I always, I, ne I don't neglect my uh, responsibility as a mother. And I see, um, because our, my children almost the same age, three children. So, for example, teenagehood, they go through together, but it's triple. Uh, you know, everything is triple. <laughs> and happiness and some problems <laughs> and uh, I, I balance because I work for myself I have two businesses but I work for myself so I, I also when I created these businesses I did it in a way that it, I will balance it with my family because for me family is also very important because always if we you know take from somewhere and go you know we have to balance everything so um I always was, you know, I see that when my children need less help and then they do their things, okay, great, I can concentrate more on my uh, work. Uh, when they need more help, uh, then I, can con I will concentrate on uh, my children because this is priority, because, you know, I'm responsible for them. It, they will have only one teenage hood in their life. Yeah. And if, if they, if something, you know, if, if, if I didn't pay attention at some problems which were there, uh, who would help them? Mm -hmm. and, um, and why do I need this business then if I will be unhappy? So for example, last year, um, I, I put a lot of my time into their, uh, you know, in their growing and relationships, you know, they're 15, 16 years old and they needed, they want, they needed, they had many questions. And, you know, we are friends, we are, we talk, talk, we explain, I don't, um, no punishment. Um, and it's just, um, but of course I had less, uh, less business last year. So what? Mm. So it's about balancing, basically. If my husband needs more time with me, then I can see it. If, if he's suffering, I, I, I have more time with him. If he needs less time, then I'm, I have my work, which is, which is a beauty when we have uh, something for ourselves. Mm. We're never alone because some, some mothers are afraid, uh, for, you know, when they're, they gave so much time to children and then my, the children grew up and uh, sometimes they don't even say thank you. Yeah. Um, and then um, they, you know, they gave all their life to the children. That's why I think it's very important to have something for ourselves, which nobody can take from us. It's something, it's like my, for me, my jewelry business is my other child and my consultations, it's my other child. So I have five children. <laughs> And the husband, six. <laughs> that is very true. Oh my goodness. So it is true. It's always having that balance in that where you could 
put your energy where the energy is most needed at the time because it's true yeah. sometimes even the kids don't need your same no matter what you want to give them everything they just don't need yeah you exactly right. it's okay to yes it's okay exactly yeah. now they need me less which i'm very happy about sometimes they call me and they they share things okay yeah. great and then yeah that's, okay. that's the thing and so in your opinion because what i think this on your post you said when is the right when when is it right to be selfless or selfish when is it when when do you think is the right time and how do you define both yes well it's a great question if we think about it um uh, you know when we, when a child is born mm -hmm. um he is selfish right the child wants to feed you know he wants to take milk he needs to survive Mm -hmm. So this, uh, you know, everything, if we look at the nature, how, how, how it's built by nature. And when, for example, when I was um, learning to be a jewelry designer or a consultant psychogenetics, I was studying uh, psych psychogenetics for seven years and um, was learning to be a jewelry designer. I needed my time. So I was like, although I had three children, but I was like a child at that time. I was safely, selfishly ta ta taking, 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 but now look, I'm, I'm giving. Yes. And um, so this is how it is. We have to be selfish in some ways in the beginning in order to give. We cannot give to other people because if we're empty inside, we have nothing to give. But if we have values to give, uh, you know, I have, <clears throat> there is a wonderful story about two um peach seeds which were put in a soil next to each other and one peach seed and then they, they started growing into trees and one, one tree was always letting other tree to have more nourishment to have you know more minerals to have more water and they would say yeah like you know but the, my near nearest um, friend to tree uh, it needs it more than me. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, um, one um, tree, which was taking a lot, you know, it grew up into beautiful tree with wonderful peaches. And then it could share to other people, you see. So um, we have to get to the stage when we are ready to share. Mm -hmm. And the other tree, it, it, it stayed, you know, dry and small. So there is, all, of course, there is always a balance, but I think we feel it within ourselves that, okay, we took already enough. We need to also to share. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, we, we feel it. So yes, I think <clears throat> selfishness um, in um, balanced terms, yes. it, it's a good idea. Uh, uh, yeah, I like that tree story. I've never heard that before, but it's really something I hope I will, I will have to share this on the highlight because it's one of the, key things when we give 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 and we sometimes forget ourselves and exactly. a, lot of people go, a lot of people go crazy after a while because yes. they realize that look i have no no more energy to give and that causes your mind to start thinking katharina before i let you go i have to ask you this final question we live in a world today the pandemic has caused so much unhappiness and it's costing our people have lost businesses people have been successful People, you know, kids have been questioning their existence because they, you know, a lot of kids, this has impacted them in many, many ways. Um, what actions would you go, go out there to say that people can adapt in, in their ways of life to help them in choosing happiness today? Yes, it's a very important question. You know, when there was a series of lockdowns, mm. I've heard the one yoga teacher said, if you cannot go out, go inside. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> because sometimes we rush we do so many things and we fly somewhere we travel yeah. we don't know why just for one meeting but uh, just you know sometimes it's good uh, to reflect mm -hmm. you know what's happening in my life or am i giving enough to myself or am i too much um i don't know where i am mm -hmm. what would i learn what i like to learn what i would like to do this is kind of uh, <clears throat> Uh, advice for for the person for the personality uh, but of course um, <clears throat> a breathing is very important sometimes when we're angry or <clears throat> excuse me yeah, there is no water <clears throat> sometimes when we are angry or we just have to think do we have to shout it out at all or we have to just come down and breathe and say in a normal or in the correct words just listen darling i want this and this and this and I don't agree with this behavior. 
let's let's agree please this is not uh, you know acceptable for me for example yes because i think we are very short tempered um, in this uh, world of very fast running we want everything and all and uh, you know if we remember about our ancestors they had to also fight with all bad conditions with you know different diseases and it was i think uh, you know some people say oh there is some problem but if we look back in medieval ages it, they, it was much harder for them mm -hmm. so if we think that we are part of the universe we are not just like one person at a time. Think of our ancestors as well. And just, you know, learning about ourselves, learning about, for example, if somebody has it, you know, uh, is short tempered, has anger issues, just, you know, take time to, um, you know, just start breathing at least, you know, count to five, breathe in, count to five, breathe out, just very simple techniques. There's so many nowadays. I think we're so lucky we live in the world of, the world gives us this information. Just, you know, take time, 10 minutes for yourself. And, uh, you know, and of course, um, you know, why breathing? Because we're all connected with our body, our mind. Mm -hmm. And um, exercise are very important. But again, to find the right ones, for example, me, I like Pilates. And when I don't have time to do it, I do it just, you know, even I can do it uh, before going to bed at 11.30, for example. But I need to do some little stretches for myself because I know that next time I will um, feel good. Absolutely. Wow, Catherine, I, I really applaud you. I mean, this conversation has really opened my eyes in how to understand one state of happiness and how what to expect when your mother your wife, you're juggling so much, how to do the balance in that? Because I think you clearly defined it, that it can be done, just have to understand the different priorities for each other. Thank you so much for this conversation. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It was a really pleasure for me.